Hello everyone, my name is Anton and in this video I want to dig a little bit deeper into the basis feature from Obsidian. It's currently in beta and for the insiders you can actually leverage this particular um, feature that is now in the insider release. So if you want the feature, you will need to be an insider and you'll need the 1.9.0 update that they recently released yesterday. So I went through a video and it was more of a kind of a an unboxing of the basis feature. I did not have any time with the feature. So you kind of got my initial looks and, and, and my takes and comments on the actual feature. And since then, I've been able to dig in and kind of test some things out and I know a little bit more about how the, the feature worked. I was comparing it to the make.md plugin initially and now I have to plan with it a little bit. I will say that the two are uh, completely different in, as far as how they work, where the make.md plugin is kind of more of a an all-in-one type of solution. So if you want to, you know, create your your views and your properties, you can do that outside of um, what properties you already have within Obsidian. But this particular plugin here, the basis, is actually takes advantage of the properties that you've already created within your vault. So we'll see here that when we come in here and we go to create our base. And then we want to start adding in properties that you, there are some features that that will not be baked into the bases plugin itself because it already has the capabilities to do some of the thing with the properties outside of bases. So let's go ahead and dig into it. Right now I have a base that is set up here. This is the default base. You get to see everything when you create a base, all the files will show up within this this uh, this view so or the default view I will say now your first step when you're coming into here is you can kind of go from left to right when you're building out your base one you get the ability to come in here and you can make changes or add different views so if you want to change the name of this particular uh, table you could or view name you can come in here and change that when different layouts come you can do that if you only want to show a certain number of objects or things within the base list then you can also tweak that here as well we will just go ahead and you can see I can change the name to table one and that gets to show up here within the view name if I come into the view options here again we can also duplicate this view we can copy it to the clipboard and we can export this to csv we can also delete the view from here as well so all right once the view is actually set up we can just go ahead and move along to the right side and the next first thing that you're going to want to do is um, go ahead and put in a filter so you can confine what's within this view to the limited stuff that you want to see you're more than likely not going to want to have every file within your vault showing up within your base. You're more than likely going to want to do a some like a query that shows you just what you want within these different views. So in this one here, I'm going to use the tag property and I'm going to confine this here to this uh, tag type media. This will show up the, the files that I've tagged with that particular tag um, and we'll work on these here in this uh, in this particular base so we have that there we have that filter if you need to do different filters you can you can come in here and obviously you can add as many filters as you need to get to what you want to see within this base but once you've done with this here then we can move on over to showing or adding the different properties you're going to want to see on this base now on the properties here one thing to note is that this list of properties is are just the the default ones that comes on a file so you can see here and it, and it makes sense when you kind of look at it here get the name create a date file size so on and so forth it also this list is populated with the the properties that you add to your base 
So when you're in this list, when I initially looked at it, I was expecting to see all the properties that are already on these files to kind of show up in this list, but that is not the case. You will need to search for those. So if I come in here and I do a search and I want to find one of the properties, I can come in here and I can find this property and I can add it in there. If I want another property, I can come in here and I can add that one and do tags. And if I want to add a property similar to what I did before, where it shows up as a, um, it leverages the formula feature, I can also add those in as well. So if I want to show the, say the tags, I already have tags here, but I want to use this formula section to show tags. What I would do is I just type the, the property name in there. And, and actually let me put an S in there because it's tags plural. Then you can see that it showed up right behind there. One thing to note that if you do it this way, this is case sensitive. So if I put a capital T, everything disappears because it does not actually see the property with a uppercase T and tags. So let's change that back to lowercase. Just understand that this is case sensitive. So when you're using this particular formula field here to populate data in a property, make sure you're, you have the right um, case for the properties that you're adding in there. So we'll go ahead and keep all those in there and we will expand that out a bit so we can see all of these. One thing to note is that when you add the property um, directly into here, that you can edit these. So you can see I can click in here and if I want to add a pro property there, I can add all these in here and I can edit these fields. I can also come in here and I, if I have some width data and you can see this is kind of a list view here where it's showing multiple tags that are on this, this file, I can come in here and I can change that as well. We saw that it updated this particular uh, formula property here that we have over here when I did that. If I come in here and I put something in, let me put the what was it, TV show. If I put that back, we can see that, that it updates and all this stuff is dynamic. One other thing to note is that when uh, before in the other video, I was wondering that uh, whether you can add property types in here. Now, because the bases are leveraging the properties that you've already defined in your vault and on your files, you get the option when you're doing that on your files to uh, configure what that property is, whether it's a text list number, so on and so forth. You can actually do that here once you add it from your vault. Now it doesn't, it only lets you create these new properties from that formula piece here. So when you create a new one, it only gives you the option to use a formula to create a property when you do it from the UI here. But if you add in a property that you already have in your vault, or you go to a file, create it there, and then, then add it here, you get the option to yeah show them exactly how it was configured before. And in some cases, you can even come in here and you can change the, the actual type while you're in here. So if I want to make this here a list, I can come in here and make that a list now. And we can see that I can add multiple types uh, for this property here. Now I can come in here and I can take all this off and I can edit these so it's back to what it was before and it has nothing in there. If I want to come in here and edit this to one of these other ones, let's put say like a date. I can come in here and I can change this so that we can put a date in here and boom we can do that there as well so pretty flexible as far as what you can do here because it is leveraging the property feature that has been built into obsidian here for a while now all right so the next thing is that while you can create a base and have its own file like you like we have here now you can also embed these things so right here in this particular base you can see that we cannot edit anything other than the base itself so we can add properties we can do the filters we can add views 
but you cannot put text based content around the uh, the actual base or the table that we have here you, what you can do though is you can come in here and we can create a, a new note and if you want to have a base put in a, in a note where maybe we, we have some text and we, we have a bunch of stuff at the head of the document and then we want to insert a you know one of our base views uh, where it's like a table that has a bunch of data in it that references content or you know files from your actual vault we can do that here and we can do it in a couple different ways we can either have that you know that full base that's somewhere in your in your vault on the file system and then we just embed it similar to what we would do with an image or you know a, a a url link or something like that there we can just do the wiki link format to do an embed and right now i can put that new base that we were just working in and i can add that in here and it shows up exactly the way it was is configured in the base file itself so we can see that here you can come in here and you can change the view you have all the, the same features and the functionality that you do uh, within the file itself the base file itself so you can do all that stuff here what you can also do is you can come in here and you can embed the uh, an actual base and just using your you know the code syntax here we'll do uh, code and we will do base so if we just do do it this way we will have the minimum amount of what we need so that we get this particular base view and if we go out of it there and we commit it we can see that now we have a base that by default will show all the, the files within your vault and then we can come in here and we can filter this we'll we can filter this exactly the way we did above let's type and so now we see those same files that we have above there and if we want to add in the the different properties we can come in here and we can do that as well similar to what we did up there one added i guess bonus that you might get with this here if you were a someone that likes messing with the code and digging into the syntax and customizing things that way you can now see what the code looks like that is generated for that base as you go in and add things to it so you can technically you can learn the syntax this way as well where you can do everything in the ui and then you can just go into the code and then you can see what it looks like what it's building on this end i think these are two powerful ways that you can come in here and you can uh, add the the bases or database type information into your files where you may want to have content around the actual base that supports the you know the the base that you're adding in here now the only the one way is that you embed it and then it's basically stuck to this particular file itself or you can embed from you know another base that is somewhere centrally located that you can then pull in and view and know that you can either edit it in here or you can edit it outside of this particular file and the information will all kind of synchronize and be updated because it's just an embed all right so i think that is going to be it for this video digging into the bases a little bit longer than than the video that i did previously was very helpful being able to see what this thing can do how it differs from some of the other plugins that are out there as well so it's actually very simple when you when you start digging into it and when you think about it, how it works because it's just leveraging the properties that are already in your vault now if you have no experience with properties and using properties then uh, that might actually be a you know a kind of a, a negative piece where you're going to have to start leveraging properties implementing them using them to really take advantage of this particular feature and then if you have any really complex type um, queries that you want to do using the functions and the formulas then that's going to be another thing that's going to get you on the learning curve so right now the ui elements are 
pretty basic in what they give you. The instructions on the, the document site were was somewhat limiting. Uh, I, you know, I, I was able to make things from viewing up there work a little bit. There are some things that I've seen that does not work for me. Like I wanted to do uh, things like group by and some other kind of complicated things and some stuff were hit or, hit or miss as I was trying to configure it. So still more to come on this particular plugin and yeah, can't wait to start digging in more, start actually getting my personal vault set up and leveraging these things so that I can get even more kind of learning from how this, how these work and what I can do with them. So yeah, more content to come for sure on this one here. And yeah, this marks a kind of a, a new day for Obsidian, kind of a big feature that they're releasing and building into the Obsidian product. So it is, so you don't have to leverage a third party plugin to get this type of stuff. And I think this is going in a great direction so far. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. If you like the content, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And until the next time, have a nice day.